Of the nearly 8 million veterans who are enrolled in the VA health care system, about 3 million are from rural areas. For the 3 million veterans living in rural areas, access to health care remains a key barrier as they simply live too far away from the nearest VA medical facility. Given these barriers, it is no surprise that our rural veterans have worse health care outcomes compared to the general population. Mobile health makes it possible for health care professionals to receive real-time data such as vital signs, glucose levels, and medication compliance because data from patient mobile uh, sensors are relayed over wireless connections. VA certainly is a recognized leader in using electronic health records, telehealth, and telemedicine. I look forward to hearing uh, from our witnesses today as we learn more about innovative wireless health technology and explore ways that we can best support wireless health solutions in the VA system. Mr. Dix. Good morning, Chairman Michaud, uh, Ranking Member Bill Rickus, and distinguished members of the House Committee on Veterans Affairs and Subcommittee on Health. My name is Kent Dix, founder and CEO of MedApps, a small business enterprise located in Scottsdale, Arizona. On behalf of the team of MedApps and the veteran-owned enterprise that manufactures our devices here in America, I would like to thank you for your opportunity to present this testimony. We are here today to speak about overcoming rural health care barriers through the use of innovative wireless health technology solutions. I am here today to talk about innovative digital wireless communications technologies like those produced by my company MedApps, which are quickly becoming a key component in the delivery of health care and services across America via wireless remote patient monitoring. Medical devices, health sensors, and their applications rely upon mobile broadband functionality, interoperability to transmit raw data, diagnostic health information, critical aspects of care, emergency services, and related health information. These services are at the forefront of a revolution in the provision and delivery of health care in America, a revolution which collapses time, space, and distance to more effectively monitor patients, develop analytic trends, maximize strained medical resources, and save lives. In a landmark comprehensive pilot with 17,000 veterans, the Department of Veterans Affairs demonstrated that by implementing remote patient monitoring, they experienced a reduction in hospitalizations by 25% at an average cost of $1,600 per patient per year for remote patient monitoring compared to an annual cost of $13,121 per patient for primary care and $77,745 per patient for nursing home care. E-care technologies like wireless mobile solutions drive down costs and improve care by closely monitoring patients wherever they may be. Thus, they allow health care to be uh, practiced in more a proactive manner rather than a reactive manner and can possibly head off a patient going to the emergency room or hospital setting in the first place. In my hand up here is our health pal. HealthPal is a technology whose sole purpose is to allow a patient to stay connected with their electronic health record and ultimately their caregiver. The HealthPal is FDA cleared and communicates wirelessly or wired with other medical devices. The HealthPal, like the one that I'm holding in the hand, has, has mobile cellular technology, M2M technology, like this uh, M2M technology I'm holding in my hand today. The 3G mobile broadband chipset by Qualcomm is about the size of a quarter, which is embedded in the HealthPal and is the key to connecting our veterans to their health care providers in an efficient and economical manner. The HealthPal works as an agnostic hub or central device that connects to various medical devices and sensors and then transmits their data to a secure central server. The HealthPal comes packaged together, including mobile wireless connectivity straight out of the box, ready to use, nothing complicated to set up, provide or maintain. Everything is done remotely, including software upgrades like the popular Kendall model. The MedApp solution is used in a variety of ways by everyday people, including David Jesse, a truck driver from rural Ohio. David's erratic schedule makes it difficult to set up and keep appointments with his doctor, and his health suffered because of it. David often had to produce logbooks to take to his back to his doctor at the Cleveland Clinic every couple of months. His doctor attempted to adjust his medication based on the information. Today, David uses the health pal in the cab of his semi-truck, has taken his readings throughout 47 states, 
The technology has allowed David to substantially improve his health and need for medication. He no longer has to drive back to Ohio every two months to be checked by a doctor who, along with David's wife, can stay connected to remotely on the road, making sure he is okay and his medical conditions stay under control. At Meridian Health, a New Jersey health system, the technology is being used to help reduce readmissions of congestive heart failure patients. Typically across the country, 27% of congestive heart failure patients are admitted within 30 days with the same condition. An average CHF hospitalization is about $8,000. At Meridian Health, the health pal and a wireless scale are provided to a CHF patient upon discharge to monitor patient every 30 days to ensure patients with the signs of worsening conditions are seen in their patients for early less resource-intensive interventions. The equipment is returned to Meridian at the end of the 30-day period. So far, 30 patients from Meridian has experienced no readmission due to heart failure within the 30-day period. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I'd like to thank each of you for your testimony of this morning. Mr. McNerney, any questions? Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just have one comment. Um, you know, what you're saying, what everyone's saying, it sounds really great. Uh, the, the Veterans Administration or the Veterans, the group of veterans is a great uh, sample. It's a great group of people to try new technology on. But I also get a feeling inside that, you know, some of the technology is not going to work and some of our veterans are going to get hurt by the, the, the new technology that's not done yet, that's not been tested out. Do, do any of you have any comment on that? Sure. Uh, my personal feeling is that we're not really inventing new technology here, at least in our, our company. A lot of us aren't doing that. It's technology that's already available today. We're just repackaging it. Um, and I believe we're at, in healthcare, we're at the tipping point it's to a point where it's causing them more harm to not be with the technology than to be without it. You let a disease exacerbate. You know, right now we're wasting taxpayers' money on a regular proportionate basis for not implementing this, this technology uh, because you, they're in rural areas. Uh, you can't get them to the doctor on a regular time. They don't go to the doctor uh, because it takes two, three, four hours to get there. Then it exacerbates to where it's an $8,000 emergency room visit. You want to try to put technology like this in place that's simple, that is accountable, that creates a sense of accountability for them to start following their doctor's orders, and that leads to compliance through them taking their medication and staying out of the hospital. Thank you. Mr. Snyder. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, gentlemen. Maybe just hear from you generally on the issue of, I don't think technology, the goal for technology should not necessarily be just more information. It should be more helpful information. Mr. Dixie. Yeah, the one, the one thing that we're really trying to do with this is not emphasize the technology. What we're trying to do is emphasize, you know, compliance is an overused word, right? Uh, we don't want to try to create the CIA effect here where you get rid of all the operatives in the field and you try to deluge with all the data there is and nobody can make heads or tails of it. We want to keep the operatives in the fields. Those are the nurses. Those are the doctor. And we want to provide them with, with clean data for them on a regular basis. But let's just talk about the technology. For the, for the lowest cost possible, the flexibility, simplicity, all I'm trying to do is create a sense of accountability between the patient and the caregiver. So if that patient is knowing that somebody on the other end is, is looking for that reading to come in, they're more likely to take the reading, they're more likely to take the medication, and they're more likely to stay out of the hospital. So we're trying to put that sense of accountability in. We call it our technology 20% technology and about 80% psychology. All right? It's not about the technology. It's about that connectivity you have between the two and that accountability that you set up that's going to drive down health care costs. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank all of you. And uh, since we only got uh, three minutes to go vote, uh, have a, we have a choice of holding everyone here for about an hour or for us uh, submitting uh, questions in writing. So uh, we've decided to submit questions uh, in writing. But I really appreciate uh, of the testimony here today uh, of this panel and the other two panels, and there definitely will be a lot of questions that we have uh, uh, as well. So I want to thank you very much. This is a very important issue and one that there's a lot of interest in. So without uh, any further ado, I'll close the hearing. Thank you.